Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the thyroid. I have some interesting information. I'm going to try to keep this really, really simple. If you have a thyroid problem, this video is for you. I've done a lot of videos in the past on the thyroid. Uh, this one comes in at a slightly different angle. Okay. So we have two different situations with the thyroid. We have a thyroid condition where you have not enough hormones. It's called a hypothyroidism. And then a condition where you have too many hormones. That's called a hyperthyroidism, uh, okay? Now, with a hypo, 90% of the time, it's going to be Hashimoto's. That's an autoimmune issue. With a hyperthyroid uh, issue, 80% of the time, it's going to also be an autoimmune condition called Graves' disease, okay? So that's the first thing you need to know. Um, most of these conditions are autoimmune conditions, so they're really not thyroid as much as their immune issues. And so let's just kind of go through this. With a hypo, okay, not enough thyroid hormones, and we're talking primarily about Hashimoto's, um, it occurs eight times more in women. Now with a hyper, Graves, um, you also see almost eight, it's like 7.5 times more common women between the ages of 40 and 60, okay? So that's the first clue. Another clue is that one of the triggers for a hypo, Hashimoto's, is that a woman who gives birth in three to eight months postpartum past their, their birth has higher incidence of Hashimoto's. So what does that tell us right there? Estrogen is involved. And we already know that estrogen blocks the conversion um, from T4 to T3. Now, if we switch over to Graves, there's a seven times higher risk of developing this condition a year following your delivery, again, involving estrogen. So estrogen apparently is a big trigger. When you get a, uh, a total T4 and a total T3 uh, measured on your blood test, that is not the best test. You should get a free T4 and a free T3 test. You're going to have more accurate data. Now, when we talk about TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, okay, which by the way, that is not a thyroid hormone. It's a pituitary hormone. Your pituitary makes a lot of different hormones, and that's one of them. It controls the thyroid from above, from somewhere in your brain. A lot of doctors will use the normal value of 0 0.4 to 5 as being normal. But there's some more credible data that states that that normal value for thyroid stimulating hormone should be 0 0.45 to 2.5, okay? Not all the way up to 5. That would be a more of a normal range that I would focus on. So if it's above that, then there's a problem. And also realize that the higher the TSH goes. Now, the next point I want to bring up is the relationship between T4 and T3. T4 is a pre-thyroid uh, hormone, and then T3 is the active thyroid hormone. So it has to be converted. And there's a huge problem with a lot of people with the conversion. And so you need certain things to help you convert, which we'll get into in a second. But if you have a thyroid problem and you're on Synthroid, you're taking T4, realize you're taking the inactive version. Your body has to convert it. And what you may not realize is that 20% of T3 is produced directly from your thyroid gland, and the rest is the T4. So if you're given T4 only and not T3, you could be a bit shy on getting the full benefit of the thyroid hormones, thus the reason why you still have these symptoms. And the other reason why you may have still have symptoms and you're on Synthroid is just simply because they're treating the, a secondary problem or you have a problem with the conversions. So what would you do if you have a hype O Hashimoto situation? Here's some ideas. I would recommend taking selenium, zinc. Both of these help the conversion from T4 to T3. They're also very powerful antioxidants. And the inflammation that's generated from these autoimmune conditions block the conversion. These cytokines block this conversion. So this, these two will help reduce that inflammation and help the conversions. 
Now, vitamin D is just a given. So vitamin D helps autoimmune conditions in general, and it's going to lower the inflammation. Sea kelp would be beneficial, not just with the iodine, but it also has selenium and zinc and a lot of the other trace minerals. And then purified bile salts. Bile salts help convert T4 to T3, and so they will increase more thyroid hormone production. And if you have a liver problem, a fatty liver, a gallbladder problem, thickened bile, you're going to be deficient in bile salts, and that could be the reason why you're not converting thyroid hormones. Now, let's shift over to graves. Vitamin D is essential. I would recommend if you're going to take vitamin D for any autoimmune issue, it should be minimally 15,000 I use, 20,000 I use, up to 40,000 I use, or even more. And the next thing I'm going to recommend is vitamin B1. Why? Because B1 can lower your estrogen dominance. If you have a hyperthyroid condition, one of the things that happens is you use a lot of B1. And so you're usually going to be very deficient. And you're also going to be deficient in vitamin D, but you're going to be really deficient in B1. And if you're deficient in B1, you can have a lot of the symptoms that will mimic a lot of other conditions. So you want to take vitamin B1. In fact, I would probably take it with the hypo as well. But for hyper cases like Graves, you don't want to take purified bile salts because that's going to give you more thyroid hormones. It's going to help you convert more. You already have too much. So you don't want to take that. All right, so that's all I wanted to communicate about the thyroid in this video. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.